As you watch this teaching, I would like to ask you to please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it. My name is Rick Renner. People always say, Rick, one of those things on the set of your TV program. So today, I'm going to show you this. You say, what in the world is that? Well, this is a container for a precious ancient document. In the Greek world, in the Roman world, when they had a document or a scroll that was considered to be very, very precious, they put it in a container to protect it. And they even did this in the Jewish world. And this particular container, which is from Israel and it's carved from ivory, was fashioned to hold the Jewish Torah. This is a Torah holder. You could open it and inside you would have found the Jewish Torah. They used a container because they held the Word of God to be so precious. And when I look at this, I think of Paul's words to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15, when he says, Timothy, from a child, you've known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. Timothy was raised to believe that the Bible was holy. It wasn't just man's words. It was the holy scriptures, something that had the power to make one wise. We keep this in the studio because when I come in and I see this container, which was fashioned to hold the Word of God, I think about how dear we must hold the Word of God in our lives. And that's why this Torah container is in our studio. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insight and understanding from the Word of God. Here's Rick. Hey friend, this is Rick Renner, and I've been waiting for you because today we're going to continue our brand new series called Symbols of the Holy Spirit. Yesterday I laid the foundation and showed you, by the way, if you didn't see yesterday's program, please go to the archives and watch it. You need to understand what I taught yesterday because I clearly showed from scripture that if you remove all the restrictions from the Holy Spirit and allow him to move miraculous things will take place. That is verified to us right from the very beginning of the Bible in Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, where the Bible says the Holy Spirit moved upon the face of the deep. And when the Holy Spirit moved, that's when God's creative power was released. I'm convinced that one reason we don't see more supernatural in the church today is because we put so many restrictions on the Holy Spirit. But when you remove the restrictions and trust Him and allow Him to move, when the Holy Spirit moves, the Bible clearly teaches the miraculous takes place. My friend, the church was never supposed to be boring. When the Holy Spirit moves, things happen. So today say, Holy Spirit, move in my life. I remove the restrictions and please move in my church. Please move and let us see your creative power right in front of us. That's God's will for your life and for the life of your church. But hey, right now I'm offering you my brand new series, which is called Symbols of the Holy Spirit. It's 10 parts. It is just jam packed with insights about the Holy Spirit. And it comes with this remarkable study guide. The two of these together are just dynamite. You'll see it. You'll hear it. You'll read it. You'll really get this into your heart. My friend, you need to understand the work of the Holy Spirit, and that's what this is about. And that's why I also want you to have my book, which is called Why We Need the Gifts of the Holy Spirit. How sad that the gifts of the Holy Spirit seem to have disappeared in so many churches. But the problem is not the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit is allowed to move, He moves. Things happen. But you have to create an environment for Him to move. And when the Holy Spirit moves, spiritual gifts are released, and we need those gifts. That's why I've called this book, Why We Need the Gifts of the Holy Spirit. And right now, we're also offering you my book called The Holy Spirit and You, Working Together as Heaven's Dynamic Duel. You have to know how to work with the Holy Spirit, and that's what this book will teach you. By the way, for those who become partners, we also send you a couple books as our way of saying welcome to our partner family, we send you my book called Life in the Combat Zone. That is not a prophecy. 
that you're going to go into a combat zone when you become a partner. You're already in a combat zone. Everybody's dealing with something. How do you live successfully in the middle of a battle? How do you thrive in any situation? That's what this book is about. And when you become a partner, we'll send this to you as our way of saying welcome to the family. And we'll also send you Denise's little book called The Gift of Forgiveness, which is so powerful. And remember, if you need prayer, we are here for you and we want to hear from you. Just call the number on the screen right now or send us an email as soon as we get your call or as soon as your email shows up in our inbox. Denise and I and our team will begin to pray with you and we will stand in faith with you until you receive that breakthrough that you need from heaven. We really, really mean that. But today I want you to reach for your Bible and today we're going to be looking at the symbols or the metaphors of the Holy Spirit used throughout the entire Old and New Testament. And you're going to find that there primarily are 15 symbols or 15 metaphors used to describe the person, the power, and the work of the Holy Spirit. Let me give them to you. Number one, the Holy Spirit is called oil. Secondly, the Holy Spirit is referred to as dew. Isn't that interesting? I'm going to show that to you in the Bible today. Number three, the Holy Spirit is referred to as rain. Number four, he's referred to as a river. Number five, he is referred to as water, living water. He's referred to as fire. The Holy Spirit is symbolically described as a dove. We know the Holy Spirit is also described as clothing. We know he is called wind. We know the Holy Spirit is called a gift. What does that mean? We know the New Testament clearly says the Holy Spirit is a seal and not just a seal, but he also is the earnest, the earnest of our salvation. The Holy Spirit is referred to as glory. He is referred to as light and he's referred to as wine. So let me go through that list again. First of all, the Holy Spirit is called oil and dew. He's called rain. He's called a river. He's called water. He's called fire. He's referred to as a dove, as clothing, as wind, as a gift, as a seal, as an earnest, glory, light, wine. All of those are emblems, symbols, or metaphors to describe the work of the Holy Spirit. But today we're going to begin with the first two. Today we're going to be looking at the Holy Spirit symbolically as oil and as dew. In the Bible, the Holy Spirit is referred to as oil 200 times. 200 times the metaphor of oil is used to describe the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I have my Bible. I hope you have yours. So let's go first of all to Acts chapter 10 verse 38, a very important verse about the ministry of Jesus where the Bible says he was anointed. That word anoint refers to oil. Listen to this. Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. But in the very first of verse 38, it says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power. That word anoint is from the Greek word creo, which means to anoint with oil. Actually, the word creo is formed from the Greek word for the human hand. And when someone was anointed, usually they would put oil on their hands and then they would turn their hands downward and would begin to massage or rub the oil into the person being anointed. And when the Bible says God was anointed with the Holy Ghost and power, it literally means God put his hands on Jesus. And when God put his hands on Jesus, just like oil could be imparted to a person, God imparted the anointing of the Holy Spirit into Jesus' life. It came with power for God was with him. Even the word oil, the symbol of oil, is to describe the anointing that came upon Jesus. But the very first time we find this metaphor used in the Bible is in Genesis chapter 28, verses 18 and 19. Jacob has wrestled with an angel the whole night. And the Bible tells us Jacob rose up early in the morning and took the stone that he had put for his pillow and set it up for a pillar and poured oil on top of it and called the name of that place Bethel. The word Bethel means the house of God or the place where God lives. And this is the first time in scripture we find oil used to describe the presence of the Holy Spirit. He poured oil upon it because that oil represented the presence and the power of God that he had encountered in that place. And so here we find the first mention of oil in connection 
with the Holy Spirit in Scripture, and it describes the very strong presence of God. But when you come to Exodus chapter 30, verses 22 to 28, God speaks to Moses about the anointing oil, which again is symbolic of the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. And listen to what God says to Moses. Moreover, the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take thou also unto thee principal spices, of pure myrrh five hundred shekels, and of sweet cinnamon half so much, even two hundred shekels and fifty, and of sweet calamus two hundred and fifty shekels, and of cassia five hundred shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary, and of olive oil a hen. Now listen to this. And thou shalt make it an oil of holy ointment. We're talking about an ointment that would represent the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. An ointment compound after the art of the apothecary. It shall be a holy anointing oil. And here we find the oil represents the holy presence of the Spirit of God. And then he adds, And thou shalt anoint the tabernacle of the congregation therewith, and the ark of the testimony, and the table, and all of his vessels, and the candlestick, and all of his vessels, and the altar of incense, and the altar of burnt offerings, with all of his vessels, and the laver, and his foot, which tells us emphatically it is God's intention for the holy oil of the Holy Spirit to anoint everything in the house of God. God wants to anoint everything in your church and everything in your house. But then it says, and thou shalt sanctify them, which tells us when the oil of the Holy Spirit comes into our life, it consecrates us, it sanctifies us, and it sets us apart. And thou shalt sanctify them that they may be most holy whatsoever Touches them shall be holy, and thou shalt anoint Aaron and his sons, and consecrate them unto me, that they may minister to me in the priest's office. And thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, saying, This shall be a holy anointing oil unto me throughout all your generations. And here we find very clearly, God tells us we need the oil of the Holy Spirit, the anointing of the Spirit to bring the presence and the power of God into our homes, into our church. And when the oil of the Holy Spirit touches us and really comes the moment we get saved, when we receive that anointing of the Holy Spirit, it sanctifies us and it consecrates us. It separates us for God's use for the rest of our lives. But when you look at both the Old and the New Testament, you find there were eight principal ways that oil was used to define the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Number one, we've already seen this, the consecration of a priest. You can read about that in Exodus chapter 30, verse 30, Leviticus 4, verses 3 through 5, Numbers 3, 3. When a priest was installed into the ministry, he was always anointed with oil because oil represents the presence of of the Holy Spirit. Number two, oil was used for the consecration of a king. You can read about this in 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 1, 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 17, 1 Samuel 16, verse 13, when David was anointed, or 2 Samuel chapter 2, verse 4, verse 7, or chapter 5 and verse 3, or 1 Kings chapter 1, verse 39. We find that when a king was installed into his position, he was anointed with oil, and that oil represented the presence of the Holy Spirit that consecrated him, sanctified him, it set him aside, and when the oil was applied, it empowered the king for service. But number three, even the word Messiah is about the anointing. The word Messiah means the anointed one. There are examples of this from all over the Bible, but one of the most notable ones is Psalm chapter 2, verse 2, which refers to the Messiah as the Lord's anointed. Anointed with a capital A, which means the Messiah was more anointed than anyone else. God put his spirit upon the Messiah who was Jesus. And that is why in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, it says how God anointed, he put the spirit upon Jesus. How God anointed the oil of the Holy Spirit came upon Jesus. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power. That oil represents the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. But hold on. Oil also symbolizes the empowering, infilling presence of the Holy Spirit in the life of every single believer. We can read about this 
in 1 Samuel 16, verse 13, Zechariah 4, verses 1 through 6, Matthew 25, verses 1 to 13, Acts chapter 1, verse 8, Galatians chapter 5, verse 16, and Ephesians chapter 5, verse 17 and 18. All of these places tell us the oil is symbolized by the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit's oil, His presence and His power comes into the life of every person when they repent of sin. And that oil of the Holy Spirit consecrates them, it sanctifies them, and it separates them to God's service for the rest of their life. But then, number five, we find concretely even Jesus used this concept of oil Himself to describe the anointing that was upon him, we can read this in Luke chapter 4, verses 18 and 19, where Jesus picked up the scroll in the synagogue and he read, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. And here Jesus uses this concept so correctly. He says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. That word anointed again means to apply with a hand. It was the equivalent of saying, the Holy Spirit is upon me because God has laid his hands upon me and therefore I have received the oil or the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus gave us the result of the anointing to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Even Jesus recognized he had been anointed with the oil of the Holy Spirit and empowered him for ministry. Number six, God anoints all believers with the oil of the Holy Spirit. We particularly read this in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21, where the Bible says, Now he which established us with you in Christ and hath anointed us is God. You see, God gives the oil of the Holy Spirit to every individual believer, every person who repents of sin and calls Jesus the Lord of his life receives the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit comes like oil, he comes with power, he comes with presence, he consecrates, he sanctifies, he separates. But wait, oil is also symbolically used to describe the healing power, the healing power of the Holy Spirit. And we see this in James chapter 5, verse 14 and 15, where the Bible says, Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him. Listen to this anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up, and if he have committed any sins, they shall be forgiven him. The oil itself has no healing or magical powers, but the oil is symbolic of the Holy Spirit's presence, the presence and the power of God. And that's why they used oil. It was a symbol for their faith, it was a moment when they could release their faith. When they applied the oil, they believed symbolically it meant the power and the presence of God was there to heal. But hold on. There's one more example. Number eight, the oil also symbolizes the teaching ministry of the Holy Spirit, which belongs to you, to me, and to everyone that is saved. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 27, the Bible says, But the anointing which you, I'm talking about you, and any believer, the anointing which you have received of him abides in you, and you need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him, which means if you don't have a human teacher available to you, you have the oil of the Holy Spirit, you have the anointing of the Spirit of God, and when the Spirit of God, like oil, anoints you, it enables you to know things supernaturally by divine revelation. The Holy Spirit will teach you. So over and over and over and over in Scripture, we see the Holy Spirit metaphorically described as oil. But wait, today we're going to look at the next one as well. And the next metaphor or symbol of the Holy Spirit in Scripture is dew. Yes, just like the dew that you might see on your lawn every morning. You say, wow, where do you find that in the Bible? Well, we find that in Psalm 133, verses 1 through 3. Listen to this. Behold how good and precious it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. That word unity is very key in this verse. It is like the precious 
ointment. We're talking about the anointing of the Holy Spirit. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down the beard, even Aaron's beard, and went down to the skirts of his garment. And then it goes on to explain, even as the dew of Hermon. It's talking about the anointing, the ointment of the Holy Spirit. And this verse says it's even as the dew of Hermon, as the dew that descendeth upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commandeth the blessing, even life forevermore. And in this verse, the Bible tells us about the Holy Spirit as dew. We have to think about dew for a moment. Moisture is in the air all the time, but you can't see it. It's there. It's invisible. You can't touch it. But if the atmospheric conditions change and the proper conditions are met, suddenly that which is invisible in the air, all of that moisture which you can't see and you can't touch, when the atmospheric conditions are met, suddenly all of that invisible water manifests. And when it manifests, it shows up as dew. It's called the dew point. That's when suddenly the moisture in the air breaks and all of the moisture in the air suddenly appears everywhere. It's on the furniture, it's on the trees, it's on your lawn furniture, it's on anything that you've left out in the open. Everything is covered by dew. Did the dew just miraculously appear? Well, actually it was always there. It was always in the atmosphere, but conditions had to be met for it to be manifested. And in this verse we find the Holy Spirit manifests much like dew. The very first of this verse says, when there is unity, suddenly the dew of God shows up. That dew is the manifestation of the Holy Spirit who is always with us. He's always in the atmosphere of the church. You may not see him. You may not always feel him but he only manifests his presence where there is unity. That's why when a church or a person has strife in their life, they may not experience the manifest presence of God. But when a spirit of unity emerges, suddenly the power of God that is in the atmosphere shows up and everyone in church gets touched by it. It's just like dew that appears on all the grass, on all the trees, on everything out in the open. When the dew comes, everything is touched by the manifestation of that moisture. And when we get into unity, the Holy Spirit's power, His anointing, like dew, suddenly shows up in the church and everyone is touched. And that's why the verse says, for there the Lord bestows His blessing, even life forevermore. That's what we saw in Acts chapter two, when the believers got into one accord, suddenly the Holy Spirit showed up. Everyone was touched. But today we've seen that in the scripture, more than 200 times, the Holy Spirit is referred to as oil. And we've also seen in Psalm 133, the Holy Spirit is like dew. He is with us all the time, waiting for us to get into unity so he can show up in our lives and in our churches. I'll be back in just a moment, and I'm going to pray for you. The Holy Spirit is God's gift to the church, and the Bible is jam-packed with insights into the person, power, and work of the Holy Spirit. The Bible provides a long list of symbols of the Holy Spirit that are powerful and important for you to understand. In this 10-part series, Symbols of the Holy Spirit, Rick Renner expounds on these symbols and how they are used throughout the Bible. Rick covers the person, power, and work of the Holy Spirit, the symbols of the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament, the symbols of the Holy Spirit in the New Testament, the rich relationship with the Holy Spirit that is awaiting you. Available in digital or physical formats, starting at just $20, you'll be so glad you invested in this powerful series. In addition, you can also order Rick Renner's book, The Holy Spirit in You. In this book, you'll learn that the secret to sustaining strength is fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. This life-changing book can be yours for $15. You can also order the book, Why We Need the Gifts of the Holy Spirit. This book will give you a new understanding of the gifts of the Spirit and how you can operate in the supernatural power that God has given you. It can be yours today for $10. Don't miss this special offer, this series, Symbols of the Holy Spirit, and the books, The Holy Spirit in You, and Why We Need the Gifts of the Holy Spirit. Call the number on your screen now or go to renner.org to order. Call and get these powerful resources today. 
My name is Joel Renner, coming to you from Moscow, Russia, and I want to say thank you to all of our ministry partners. Your support has allowed us to help special needs children in Russia. Because of you, we are able to help children with disabilities. Because of your gifts, we are able to give them attention and care. We're even able to provide outings for their parents where they can enjoy their children as a family with no worries or concerns. Your gifts have lifted their burdens. Several times a year, we put on a children's musical that are based on Bible stories so these children can learn about God's Word and His great love for them. Parents and grandparents who accompany them fill the church in anticipation for this outreach. When you give to Renner Ministries, you can bring joy to these children and give them the hope of God's Word. Will you consider joining us as a partner today so we can continue helping these beautiful children? Without your support, we simply cannot do this. Please call or go online right now. When generous, caring people like you give, we are able to give these children with special needs the care and attention they need so desperately. Please call us or go online to winner.org. Through your donations of any size, we can continue to make a huge difference in these children's lives. This week, we're studying the symbols of the Holy Spirit in the Old and in the New Testament. And today, we've looked at the metaphor of oil and dew as symbols of the Holy Spirit. Now, when we come back tomorrow, we're going to see the next three. And we're going to see that metaphorically in the Bible, the Holy Spirit is depicted as rain, as rivers, and as living water. It's going to be so good. But there's so much in the series that I want you to order the complete set so you can study and study it or maybe share it with a Bible study or with a friend. The whole series is called Symbols of the Holy Spirit. It's 10 parts. It's available on our website right now. And it comes with a tremendous study guide that you will just love. I'm telling you, my friends, I love the study guides because they are loaded with all the points, all the principles, all the Greek words and Hebrew words. It's all right here. It will really make this more powerful for you. And we're also offering you my book, which is called Why We Need the Gifts of the Holy Spirit. The back of the book says, a fresh look at the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Are you hungry to know and experience more of the supernatural workings of the Holy Spirit? God has yet unknown dimensions of power waiting for you. He really does. And I want you to know why we need the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We're also offering you my book called The Dynamic Duo, The Holy Spirit and You, Working Together as Heaven's Dynamic Duo. Order your copy today. But I want to pray for you. Father, thank you in the name of Jesus that when we got saved, you laid your hand on us and you imparted to us the oil of the Holy Spirit, your empowering presence. You called us, you saved us, you sanctified us, you consecrated us, and you gave us all the power we need for service. And we thank you that when we get into unity, your power shows up in our lives. We thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, it's been good. Tomorrow we'll come right back and continue. But until then, remember Ecclesiastes 8.4, where the word of a king is, there is power. Thank you for watching this broadcast. For more information on product resources or to learn how you can partner with this ministry, please connect with us at renner.org. Also, please be sure to visit us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. If that teaching helped you, would you please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it.